Hi all. After doing the video yesterday about the Adams win in the second round concerning winning the C4 pawn, it did remind me of a game played years ago on the Let's Play Chess Com site, which was actually a rest of the world voting game. It was against GM ICCF GM Anton Faller against the rest of the world. He was playing white and I checked the game records and actually it was the identical position reached as in the Adams game. So let me show you the position I'm talking about. It's here. After bishop g2 takes knight f3, a6. White had played castles. So Faller had played just castling. And after knight c6, instead of e3, which is what Adams' opponents played, Faller actually played knight c3. Now, if black plays the immediate b5 here, then white's much better with just knight e5 because of this um, diagonal. So that's a, a tactical nightmare for black. Um, let's have a quick check on that. So takes here, and now if um, queen takes, rook takes, knight d5, knight takes, and white is smashing black here because um, the king is still in the center here. And in this position, there actually appears to be a beautiful resource in this position. I would have thought it was something simple like bishop g5. But actually here, rook d8, believe it or not. And if king takes bishop g5, and this is really crushing now, because uh, black is forced to give up a lot more material. So anyway, this would be um, a crushing position. If we go back... To this critical position after knight c3 so let's assume black doesn't want to play b5 and instead plays rook b8 now here is the beautiful move which um Faller plays or the beautiful conception first he plays e4 and after bishop e7 there was a very deep second pawn sacrifice which the team had to face and um the move was Queen e2, believe it or not. So one of the points of knight c6 was supposedly to support e5, the e5 where it's to discourage knight e5, but also to keep a check on this d4 pawn. So um, the team decided to snap d4, and the position went downhill rapidly now. In fact, the game only lasted about 22 moves from here. Um, knight takes d4, queen takes. After rook d1... Black has some severe development problems. And after queen c5, white now played e5. So chasing the knight back. And now knight e4, gaining another tempo on the queen. After queen b4, Faller played queen g4 now. And the extent of black's difficulties are starting to be highlighted. The team played an awkward bishop retreat, bishop to f8. Um, there, there was tons of analysis at the time. I just want to quickly show you if black had castled, just trying to give up the exchange to hold on to the extra pawns. So bishop h6, threatening mate. So say black gave up the exchange. Here is a variation which um, I was quickly looking with Rivka earlier. So in this kind of variation here, if black's being really materialistic, a key move here is now bishop e4, so protecting that rook on b1 and putting more pressure on d7 now because this rook's free to move. And this is the kind of continuation which would um, be critical for black. Knight d5, if ed bishop takes d5, and black has a great deal of difficulty defending f7 in this position. And this kind of position here is just very bad for black if this had been reached. So bishop takes b7, trying to decoy the bishop from d7, and back to e4. And white's clearly better. But in the game, we would played bishop f8, and Faller now played a3, further exploiting that queen. And now, bishop d2, giving up yet another pawn. And three pawns was just too much. So bishop c3, queen b6, and now... Faller chased the queen all the way back to a7. So materialistically, black's done very, very well. 
starting from winning the C4 pawn to winning the D4 pawn to winning the B2 pawn. Unfortunately, Fallon now introduces quite a crushing weakness. He plays bishop d4, and the team now played c5, not wanting to play queen a8, which would be quite ridiculous. Um, where white could just continue, according to Ribka, with rook here to c1 with, with a clear advantage to white. But um, c5 was played. And now, fella, he gets this fawn pawn in the centre. After knight d6, bishop takes e takes d6 he leaves his bishop and pre because he's got a crushing form pawn on d6 and black's king is still stranded in the center so after rook f8 he just plays now rook e1 and he's threatening rook takes e6 and if fe queen e7 mate and there's really no adequate def defense here so a quick look queen c5 rook takes e6 and if king d8 then just rook b e1, threatening, well let's have a look, b, if b5, the most crushing move here, according to Ribka, is actually bishop a, h3, as a direct threat I think now, if queen takes f8, knight takes, and then rook e8 mate, so say queen c6, queen g5, f6, queen back to g7, threatening queen e7 mate, and black has to like sacrifice the queen to stave off mate here. Um, let's, let's, an, another try, let's just quickly demonstrate um, one of the mates. So say, um, say a non-move, a5. So queen that takes f8 is, is on actually. Knight takes and then rook e8 mate. So that's the threat. So it's very hard for black to do anything here. So let's have a quick... Overview and summary. It was the same position that Adam's opponents had, um, but he played in this position e3 instead of um, e4. So e4 is a very interesting move. If bishop e7, then queen e2. So this is what Fallon had played against the team. So it's introducing the concept of a double pawn sacrifice, and it is, it is a very deep idea. Another variation which, actually I'm not sure I mentioned, was um, black taking on e5. This is also great fun for white in this kind of variation, where white regains that c4 pawn and is now having this pressure on, on the c line. And in this kind of position, b4, queen c3, there's a lot of pressure on black's position. And the queen is getting you know, severely harassed by these bishops. So if black's forced to, to lose more pawns, it ends up being clearly worse for black. A nice exchange sacrifice in order to attack g7 and b8. And this is just much better for white. So back to the game. After queen e2, the team took one pawn. Then... Fella offered the second pawn sack, which we didn't take, but now played queen g4, so a very dangerous move. And after bishop f8, unfortunately, the king was stranded in the centre. So basically, Fella had strategically crushed the team, you know, a sitting slow target of the king in the centre, just waiting to be exploited. So Fella gave up the b pawn and developed a huge initiative. So it's all stemming from that initial c4 pawn sacrifice quite a deep correspondence game which um, could have ended like this but um, after rook e1 the team had resigned so there are some dangers of taking the c4 pawn especially if you follow up with some more pawn sacrifices later and the opponent's king is trapped in the center like um, the team was in that game it was played uh, about uh, three years ago as a rest of the world voting game and there was an enormous amount of analysis, as I say. So um, I just wanted to put the Adams game into the context of a key correspondence game in the same variation. I hope you enjoyed that, and please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.